good morning. Uh, it's time for another movie review. Apologies for those who follow my channel. Uh, the delay between uh, videos. Uh, I've had a few health problems uh, and uh, I've been trying to uh, deal with those. But let's get on to the review anyway. Uh, 1960, this is a review of The Virgin Spring. It's written and directed by Igmar Bergman, the famous Swedish director. Black and white with subtitles. And uh, a familiar cast for Bergman fans in this movie. Uh, <coughs> there will be a slide. Uh, the script is written by Ulla Isaksson. Uh, and uh, the, briefly, the lead characters. Max von Sydow plays Tora. Uh, Birgitta Valberg plays Maretta, uh, Thora's wife. Uh, Gunnar uh, Lindblom plays Ingira. She's a half-sister to Karin, the daughter, who's played by Birgitta Pettersson. And if you want to know more details, uh, as I say, there will be a slide. This movie is set in the 13th century in medieval Sweden. It's a tale about a father's merciless response to the rape and murder of his young daughter. The story was adapted by screenplay writer Ulla Isaksson from a 13th century Swedish ballad. And we are at the bridge between Christianity arriving and paganism ending. The initial image in the movie is of a heavily pregnant girl looking wild-eyed, alone, praying to Odin Norse God for war and peace. And she's having difficulties handling the amount of devotion and attention given to her half-sister, 15-year-old Karen. <coughs> her daily life uh, is preparing food, light the fire, and doing basic domestic chores. And we went, then witnessed a scene where uh, she grabs a toad, stabs it, although it appears to have died, although it hasn't died, and then she puts it in a huge loaf of bread to be delivered to Karen, who's heading out towards church. The movie depicts religion as a significant part of life. Uh, although Tora is having some difficulties, he returns to his belief in the god Ordin. Bergman's obsession for detail is prolific in this movie. He focuses on quite menial tasks, but really does elaborate on them. One early scene to illustrate, the mother combing her daughter's hair meticulously to get her ready for church, and the elaborate displays at the food table with the telling of grace. We then moved on to the point where we witness how Karen, as a character, uh, is described. She's a very playful adolescent, articulate, and able to flaunt her personality, and she has a tremendous warmth, although she, at times, it's quite a naughty little girl, but very appealing. A very appealing character, which regrettably is her downfall as we move to the second part of the movie, which uh, describes the travelling from the home to the church by Karen and her half-sister on a donkey. As I said, she goes with Ingira, and en route they, they find a spring, the Virgin Spring. Three herdsmen spot her and befriend her, but their intentions are quite wicked. Uh, the naive Karen invites the three boys to join her in sharing lunch, and unbeknown to her, the toad that's been placed be uh, previously between the chunks of bread uh, is uh, uh, the focus of uh, how the movie changed. The toad's recovered somewhat, and uh, as the, the herdsmen uh, are about to uh, get stuck in, uh, their consternation at seeing the toad moving inside the bread uh, then changes the mood very, very quickly. They become very evil-eyed and they focus on Karen. And we witness the three evildoers systematically hold her down and rape her. And then they kill her uh, with a wooden stick. The scene movie, it causes a considerable amount of controversy both within European circles and also at the Oscar ceremony. The film actually won the foreign language Oscar for 1961. The herdsmen take mementos, but the young boy with them 
who hasn't really been involved in any of this dastardly deed, is quite overcome. And when he tries to sample some more of the food that was left, his revulsion leads him to vomit. The family, waiting in anticipation of Karen's return uh, as dusk arrives, and then the three herdsmen appear, asking if they can have shelter. Of course, uh, they aren't aware that the family are the parents of the slain girl, and the parents, uh, 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 as well, of course, have no idea of the slaying. But some clothing which one of the, one, which one of the herdsmen uh, has taken as a memento, he tries to sell it to the revenge carried out by Torah. And then the film actually focuses in the, obviously on the revenge, but also we witness the forgiveness from the God uh, uh, by Torah and the family. And Bergman's conclusion uh, illustrates the emotional pain, grief and shock uh, that has taken place. The cinematography is excellent, pathos is extraordinary, and some scenes, like the wind blowing petals off the flowers, are remarkable. We see the three uh, uh, eating some of the bread as very symbolic. This tale is over 700 years old, and it didn't feel that old, however, when it, uh, it felt more like an incident that could have taken place about 20 or 30 years ago. And that's the beauty of Bergman. When he goes into historical facts and philosophies and religions, he manages to bridge uh, with the present day. And that's possibly the beauty of his work. I was particularly impressed by, his, uh, by this movie. Karen is going to collect candles. And when she gets them, following her attack, the candles, which of course symbolically uh, uh, illustrate religious tolerance and understanding, uh, glow out. And uh, they spilled from her grasp as she has been subjected to the horrors by these peasant-like boys. The Virgin Spring, as I say, won the Oscar in 1961, and it's a very harrowing tale. But I implore you to give it a watch. It is remarkable.